Okay. So that's per person and that's per occurrence. Okay. So I get you. Good question. Um, so now let's go through bodily injury. Would that be something that would protect you, protect you from being sued, or is it a thing that you're protecting? That's me. Actually, that is That's you being, being sued. sued. You injured somebody seriously. Gotcha. And great. And they had the right to make a claim. Okay. Their medical bills, their vehicle are all covered with their policy. Property damage. That covers me. That yes. covers you from being sued. <laughs> Again. <laughs> because it's something that you became legally liable to pay. Okay. And that's outside the state oh, of Michigan. I, I see how you're going. Okay. Okay. I understand now. And now we've got <clears throat> personal injury protection coverage. Okay, that covers me. That covers you. No question about it. Now, the thing is, is we can't increase that coverage or decrease it. Right. It's unlimited for the rest of your life. Anything related to an accident. Um, property protection insurance. That's damage to property inside the state of Michigan that you've become legally liable to pay. Okay, that would Where be would you sued. say? Correct. Property protection insurance. Now, now we'll jump down to collision. Where that, would you think yeah, that's that would... things. It's yeah. at the bottom. Collision. What about other than collision or, in other words, comp? Comp, yeah, other things. Okay. Uninsured motorist coverage. That's for me being sued or suing. Actually, that is what protects you. This is where somebody's injured you and you had the right to make a claim against them. Okay. You're the one suing them. Okay. And you had the right to make a claim against them, but they didn't carry enough insurance. Oh, okay. Or they didn't have any insurance. That's underinsured. So actually, those are level one coverages so that protect actually, yeah, you. They actually protect me. That's right. Correct. From them. That's correct. <clears throat> it protects you from people that don't have insurance or don't have enough insurance. Okay. Mini tort or limited property damage, and some companies will call it limited property damage buyback. Um, that is you being sued because you could become legally responsible to pay somebody else's $500. So I'm going to call this mini-tort here. Okay. Okay. So now, in towing and labor, um, and I guess if you wanted car rental, those will all just be things. Things, right. So we can put on here towing, car rental, And uh, even this coverage down here for stereos and the, and the like, that's all stuff. Right. Now, I want you to take a look at this. Would you agree that these are the most important things to you? Yes. PIP, you can't increase or decrease. Right. So we're not going to be able to affect that at all. Property damage, can increase, can't decrease. Bodily injury can, property protection, mini tort, so on and so forth. <clears throat> Now, let's take uninsured and underinsured motorists. How much money are you spending on one vehicle for that? $18. And then $3. And then $3 for underinsured. So you're spending $21 here. How much are you spending on collision and comp? $88 on one and $117 on the other. Oh, and then comp is 44 and 54 So you're spending significantly more. Yes, absolutely. So what you're doing is spending, so let's call 44, 8, 12, so 132 for one vehicle. That's the lowest of the two vehicles. So you're spending $132 here. <clears throat> now let's go to bodily injury. $34, and where else we got? Property protection, that, we're not going to do that. And then mini tort, you can't change that. Okay. So bodily injury, you're spending... $34 for this vehicle. So what you're currently doing is spending most of your money on in the, the least important things and the least amount of money on the most important things. Would you agree? Yes, absolutely. 
That seems a little out backwards. It certainly does. If you had to raise this deductible so that you could save enough money to get these to the levels you would like, would that be a smart thing? Yes. It would be a very smart thing yes, to do. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to redo this. And the most important thing we need, we want 500000 per person and 500000 per occurrence. That's okay. the maximum we can get. <clears throat> There's a thing called an umbrella policy that you can get more, but at least let's do this for right now. Okay. As I said, that's probably going to cost us all of three dollars. <laughs> so, um, next, I will tell you that we can't get the half a million dollars liability for uninsured and underinsured motorist until we increase the bodily injury, which you're going to want to do anyway. Okay. Because insurance companies won't let you insure yourself at a higher level than you're insuring other people against what you might do to them. I see. So they have you raise the bodily injury, then you can raise the uninsured. Oh, okay. You can raise the bodily injury and not even take the uninsured and underinsured, but you can't take the underinsured at half a million. Okay. Okay. So that makes sense? So we want that at 500, 500. So now we have the ability to cover you against these, you know, we're spinning the wheel of destiny. If we need to raise the deductible even to $1,000 so that you can get these things at no additional cost, I don't care. Yeah. My job is to take care of you. Right. And now you have the ability, let's say if we're spinning the wheel of destiny, if you've got one chance in 10 that you're going to have an auto accident and you have to pay a $500 deductible, or one chance in a hundred that you're going to have one of these serious injuries, but now you're going to be sorely underinsured and be out hundreds of thousands, you yeah. need to do this. Yeah, paying $1,000 for the car I can afford. You, paying 500000 for being sued I cannot afford. <laughs> or, even worse, getting injured and not have anyone to go or, to, exactly. and now you don't have anywhere to, for no fault of your own. Right. That's the thing. Hey, if I made a mistake and I went through that red light, I don't like it, but at least I can understand it. That was my fault. I wished I wouldn't have done it, but I did. Uninsured and underinsured motorists, even worse. I was hit from behind, pushed out into traffic, me personally. Right and broadsided by a guy doing 65. I unfortunately was on a motorcycle. Person that second, the first person that hit me took off, fled the scene. I had 2040 coverage. Wow. My agent wanted to save me a dollar. Wow. I didn't know anything about insurance. So this is important to me. Don't think it can't happen to you. I can see that. Because I thought that too. So. Now, has this ever been explained to you like this? No, no, it hasn't. Would you say that your policy is correct? No, not the way it stands now. It is not? No. And how many years have you been driving? Oh, 30. So how many years has your policy been incorrect? 30. <laughs> kind of sad it's funny but it's kind of sad well and i'm not talking about your agent or bad about your agent because i don't know this gentleman and it might be that they don't know or they don't or it might be that they don't care but we see this every single day yeah i can imagine here's the thing you don't need to run to us but you need to run from where you're at right now because this is not right for you. The only thing is, you've probably had many agents in the past, and they've all given you this. Yes. Basically, every policy that we see come in here looks almost identical to this. I worked in claims. That's why I know what this is. In fact, you only have 10 coverages on your policy. I bet it, you know more about your policy and the coverages than your agent does right now. Hmm. If you would like to take this challenge, you're welcome to do so. Call your agent right now. 